many of those people were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. So this week, it's Robert E. Lee. I noticed that Stonewall Jackson's coming down. I wonder, is it George Washington next week? And is it Thomas Jefferson the week after? You know, you, all, you really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? The Confederate monuments President Trump mentions are more than innocent markers of American history. Many exist to celebrate the Confederate cause to preserve the rights of whites over minorities. These monuments can be traced back to the Civil War. But most of the sites and symbols were actually created during periods of racial conflict long after the Civil War. The Southern Poverty Law Center compiled at least 1,503 Confederate symbols in public space. Each dot on this timeline represents a monument, a symbol, or an icon. Some represent statues. Others are names of schools, parks, or military bases. The chart starts with the Civil War, when the monuments first show up. Then in 1866, there's a rise that coincides with the formation of the Ku Klux Klan. But the chart reveals a significant rise in the creation of these monuments in two periods. The first is in the early 1900s, when ex-Confederate states in the South enacted Jim Crow laws. The response from this period is clear. The NAACP was founded during this peak. And the spike continues through the 1920s, which were marked by the reemergence of the KKK. The next cluster of Confederate monuments were built in the 1950s and 60s. Construction of the symbols spiked in 1965, the 100th year anniversary of the end of the Civil War. During this modern civil rights movement until 1970, it became more common for schools to be named after Confederate proponents. And it didn't stop there. A movement to erase these symbols of Confederate ideology has recently surfaced across the country. These statues are not just stone and metal. They're not just innocent remembrances of a benign history. These monuments celebrate a fictional sanitized Confederacy, ignoring the death, ignoring the enslavement, ignoring the terror that it actually stood for. Critics of that movement equate these monuments with Southern pride, white heritage, and culture. But the fact that a vast majority of the monuments were constructed during racial conflict reveals the opposite. They honor the Confederacy and the racism that it stood for. 